Hello and welcome to Wintalk, the first in a series of episodes where we'll be promoting and discussing the Women Invigorating the Nation Convention, which is scheduled to be held in um, the first quarter of this year. Our guests today are Tronitani Tonawai, the CEO of the Fiji Commerce Employers Federation, and uh, Shireen Fong. She's the chairperson of the Women Entrepreneurs Business Council. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, first of all, Mr. Tonawai, what is uh, FSEF or the Fiji Commerce Entrepreneurs Federation? Thank you, Nigel. So, FSEF, uh, Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, is uh, uh, is a, a federation of uh, employers. So, it's the foremost uh, representative of uh, the private sector. And so we have uh, uh, different sectors of the uh, uh, economy in there and it's comprised of, of nine, uh, nine councils. Eh? And so it, we've been around um, six decades. So that'll take us back to like 1961. Yes. Yeah, and... Um, Long before Fiji's independence. Uh, absolutely, yes. So uh, some of the, the earlier councils or businesses that have been there, the sectors are the, the trade uh, and export, uh, the retail, um, you know, council, the uh, mining and quarry uh, space, um, the tourism and, and transport. Uh, and, and then we have the more recent one, or which is um, the uh, SMEs, uh, of which uh, the Women's Entrepreneurs uh, Council uh, come under, and also the um, uh, young Entrepreneurs Business Council. So these are uh, young innovative people coming up with business ideas and, and trying to get off uh, the ground with their new ideas and uh, create a business. So um, the Federation sort of helps all these spaces and especially in, in these uh, uh, new ones. Uh, we have, you know, incubators programs and accelerator program. So we take a look at, you know, these sort of programs and trying to get individual businesses off the ground and that's where you know uh, in the women's space uh, Shireen's uh, uh, sort of council comes in there and so uh, we have um, a, a federation secretariat um, there's a CAO and then there's staff by about 12 uh, uh, staff then we have an executive uh, uh, committee um, and also the board and two trustees and so the board then again is comprised um, of the chairs uh, of each council so they sit on on the board uh, as well so it's a platform for collaboration sharing of information gathering data and um, just being the voice of the private sector you know one issue that's uh, prevalent right now is uh, labor mobility for example and so there's issues of employment there's issues of work permit, uh, there's issues of uh, training uh, where we really need to, uh, you know, do a survey of what the, uh, what skills that we have lost and that needs to be uh, filled very quickly. Uh, and if we can't do it through training, then of course we have to import the skills. And so when we import skills, for example, um, there's the Department of Immigration, which we have to uh, really collaborate and, and work with closely because of the work uh, mm -hmm. permit. Uh, yes. They're already busy with their work and we make them busier by, mm -hmm. you know, with all these work permits coming in. So we're working with them to see uh, how we could uh, get it, you know, the ease of doing business in Fiji includes uh, work permits. Eh? So this is where the Federation comes in. Uh, it works uh, with this uh, different sectors. Uh, we're one voice one platform and we're more effective that way yes. in, in getting things done. Yeah. So how much of an impact, uh, if I can call it that, does the Federation have in influencing the policy making in, in government? Um, yes, that's one of its uh, core purposes as well, is to influence uh, uh, policy. Um, it, um, the answer there, it is very, uh, it, it is recognized, let's put it that way. Uh, the Federation, Employers Federation, is recognized by government, it's recognized by the trade unions, and it's recognized um, by ILO. Uh, so, you know, when we sign up for 
uh, conventions, uh, labor uh, relations and labor conventions. Um, the Federation is party to the tripartite, which is uh, uh, the Federation employers, government and the workers, uh, the trade unions. So by structure, uh, it is very influential. Yeah. Well, let me just get in her mm -hmm. council. How sure. does it relate to, to yours? Do okay. they have to apply to, to be a member of the Federation? Yes, okay. Well, I'll just say first, and then I'll hand over to Shireen, that as uh, I mentioned earlier on, uh, the WebC, or Women's Entrepreneur uh, Business Council, is one of the nine right. councils. Yes. Okay, so all the members uh, of um, a WebC, uh, they form that council, and there's a chair, which is uh, Shireen, and that council is represented uh, on the board. Right. Yes, and so they, uh, yeah, by way of membership, and maybe she can elaborate on that mm -hmm. as well. Please do. Yes. So do, did you have to apply to become a member of the Federation? Not really, because the Federation, so we have the Federation, as uh, Chonitani said, that nine councils. Yes. So WebC was established in 2013 through the kind of funding, initial funding through ILO, International Labour Organization. They established the Women Entrepreneurs Business Council as a council under the Federation. Okay. Okay, so as part of our membership, we have individuals or entrepreneurs. We also have those that are at federation level members having their workers or their staff being part of the council. We also take membership from those that cannot afford the wider, the bigger federation membership These fee. Are individuals. individuals or even entrepreneurs who run businesses. Yeah, that cannot afford the higher Federation Council membership, become members of WebC wow. at a subsidized fee or membership fee. So our membership is made up of, yes, Federation members who wish to send their staff to be part of Council and also those entrepreneurs who run their own businesses and wish to be members. We also have women who are in the corporate space. We have women who are lawyers, who are engineers, architects, who individually may be working in some corporate organizations, become individual members of WebC. We also have women who are in the community or CSOs, NGOs, and also public service that are also members of our of our council so anybody who qualifies yeah can just walk in and and, and yes. express an interest in joining any woman any woman that would like I mean, to be yes. part of our council is not, not, most not anybody, but not any, anybody any, woman, any yeah. woman that can that wishes to be part of our council can be part of our council mm -hmm. so it's by application and uh, of course the fee is there and as a subsidized uh, cost we also have at this stage uh, just over 170 members financial members so we're one of the the, the councils that uh, have activities and uh, if I may be allowed to talk about some of those activities as part of our membership, we provide uh, training and capacity building programs like Toastmasters. We also do training for, um, for our members, like we had a uh, mentorship program where the Federation, you know, CEOs, general managers of the Federation that run more matured companies and organizations mentor some of our members who run businesses or run their own, you know, businesses. So we have that, we have had that. We also have another initiative called Bridging the Gap, where we go out to the most rural areas. Some of our members go out and uh, mentor and do business literacy and financial literacy training. We, you know, look at, the, uh, help them access, give them access to market. So we had the one in Drombuta, which was funded by GIZ, the German, uh, you know, funded government, government uh, funding up in Drambuta. Then we also gave them access, that's in the interior of Singatoka. Many people don't know, I think it's four hours again passed into the interior of uh, Singatoka. We also had more recently in May funded by the Women Fund Fiji, where we went out to the most northern tip of, of Fiji, which is Undu, 
and we had some, uh, you know, had run some programs and, and initiatives on, on uh, you know, business literacy, financial literacy. We also took with us then the Ministry of uh, Cooperatives, where the Department of Cooperatives, and they spoke about how these women can come together in a co-op to have a better voice and you know more access to you know to markets so the undo one they requested for access to markets and wanted to come to suva so we funded and helped fund the women fund fiji part of that funding helped implement and brought them in so that was in december okay. where there was a market for the undo women they brought all their artifacts all their you know things that they do handicrafts together with our WebC members, we created a market day for them. So some of them have actually, you know, okay. connected yes. to, to s buyers and, and now being able to, to promote their, um, their products. The other most recent <coughs> initiative that we have is uh, the uh, US Embassy funded Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, of which we are running now for the fourth year. And uh, with this year's or the next, the most recent uh, program uh, graduation we'll have close to 500 graduate from that program that's funded by the u.s embassy of which webc and the mccoy women's vocational training center are implementing partners or really facilitating the implementation of that program so that's that's through the the academy for women entrepreneurs u.s embassy sponsored most recently we've got a four-month program with unscap which is a uh, signed off with uh, the federation but implemented or facilitated by WebC. so we've got uh, members there from the our WebC members plus also some from the academy for women entrepreneurs being part of this uh, this program so exciting yeah and then part of that also is this win convention that is in march we'll discuss uh, more of the win convention when we come back yeah. from the break sure Thank you. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back. Um, Ms. Wong, shall we uh, revisit the, some of the strategies and uh, yep. um, I, new ideas, initiatives that you've come up with for members of your council? Yep. So with WebC, we are one, one of our, um, our strategic initiative or strategic plan. We've got, this is the third, third strategic plan that we have. For this particular one, we have four pillars, strategic pillars, of which we have strategic champions looking after each. The uh, first pillar is on processes, where we look at uh, you know, everything to do with processes within the council. And the second one is on uh, people, where a lot of the initiatives around capacity building and training of our members is part of. The other one is, the third one pillar is partnership. And uh, that's where we building relationships and partners with uh, donor agencies, with the, with the embassies, with the federation, with stakeholders, even in government. And the fourth one is on purse. And purse is around financial initiatives and how that's where membership fee comes in. That's where the win convention comes in as one of our main income earners for, the Fed for our council, for our WebC council. So with the convention or the women entrepreneurs, uh, or win invig women invigorating the nation convention, this is going to be the third year running. We first had the first convention, a one day convention in 2022, in March 22. The second one was held March last year. The third one is on the 22nd and 23rd of March this year at the Grand Pacific Hotel in Suva. So third year running, we somewhat have claimed March. We have claimed March. In fact, as you know, Women's, uh, you know International Women's Day is on the, on the 8th of March and we have claimed the month of being March being Women's Month. So that that's 
the initiative that falls under the PERS pillar. You, you mentioned in the last segment that you have about 170 financial yes. members. All right. Are there any non-financial members? Yes, so what we do is uh, members, they join. When they join, they pay a joining fee mm -hmm. and a membership fee, first up. So the joining fee, that entitles them to be members and annually they renew their mm -hmm. fee. So this 170, when I say the 170, close to 170 financial members, these are the ones that are paying annual fees, you know, their membership fee annually. Then we have those that have been there for about a year or two some of them you know hibernate with business or move offshore they still are in our membership database but have not renewed their annual subscription or their membership fee so yes we do and uh, eventually if they do you know over three four years then we sort of phase them out of our membership database all right now let's get back to um some of the programs that you have implemented where you have uh, empowered your members in the various business activities that you've introduced. Do you have a program where you, or a system where you monitor, you monitor all those that you've helped to see, you know, to gauge their performance, to see if they've measured up to the expectations of uh, what's set out in the in the programs yes we do and uh, especially on these programs that are long-term long-term uh, you know initiatives for example like the academy for women entrepreneurs funded by the u.s embassy we also keep a database so does the u.s embassy of all the alumni that have gone through that program and some of them migrate from you know the informal they haven't registered their business is what we call informal they haven't registered their business they move into web c as members we help them set up their business where they become formal so they, they in other they words you register help them register. help them yes. register and then we help them grow by providing some of these capacity building programs we also you know they go through training they go through you know with with the, the academy for women entrepreneurs we've got some really good successful stories there that you know women come in with their dreams or they've lost their job and the good thing with the AWE program, it was started in 2021, soon after or during COVID. COVID yes. Yeah, and, and you know, many of them had lost their jobs. And so for them, it was uh, fight or flight. Yes. A lot of them fought back mm -hmm. and fought back with livelihood income generating and, and you know, with innovative ideas about, uh, you know, how they can do business. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, especially one, and I'm sure we'll hear from her in, in the series to come, but how she's just grown from having lost her job to selling food parcels to now, you know, running her business and successful event business, uh, you know, in, um, in, in Fiji. So those are some of the success stories. Yes, we do keep a database of them. We also have some of them come through the AWE program who then move on to like for this Care Catalyst uh, program funded by the UNSCAP. Some of them are AWE alumni and they wanting to then expand what they're currently doing to even running daycare centers because when they go through this program, they see opportunities. Yes. You know, it opens their eyes to business opportunities. And so for one example, in Pacific Harbor, there's no really good daycare, childcare center. And she's seen the opportunity to provide that. You know, so it's it's so we do see that they become members, and then we help them progress. We give them the confidence, in fact, empower them yes. to really think beyond what they currently can do to really changing the world. Uh, Mr. Tonoi, does the federation assist uh, the council, the Women Entrepreneurs Business Council, in any way, in any of its activities or? Okay, the, 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 the support that's uh, given from, say, for example, the bigger picture. Yes. So, so the bigger picture is here. The, um, the Federation um, sees these two councils as the babies in the family. And so it is sort of a responsibility that we provide uh, that kind of support. Say, for example, uh, to ensure that training, one is training, um, say, financial literacy. So if they wanted financial literacy training, so that's where sort of uh, the Federation comes in and provides certain specific trainings. Um, 
uh, there is a, a accelerator program, for example. Uh, after it goes from incubation, um, then there's sort of a three-year uh, uh, period where it's given to a small business. So uh, a small business is uh, divided into sort of three sectors or three segments where you're tiny and it's under, you know, uh, 250 or 300,000. Then it goes to quarter million and then 1.3 million. So this is where uh, they're growing. Uh, as they continue in their activities, we try and provide the assistance to get them from here to here. So once they get to here, then they can join the other bigger uh, councils. Um, so that's the kind of uh, support that we work uh, close, you know, so that um, the business doesn't like they say in Fiji and during Amendabu, you know. Um, this whole program ensures that at least there's longevity. Yes. yes. You know, there's much hope here because support is given, empowerment is given. Um, you know, they train you how to register a company. And for someone who's trading for a while, you know, in the clothing business and have never grown in their turnover, for example, uh, 50, 60 thousand um, dollars maybe, uh, this is the opportunity where they actually show you how to set your books, uh, how to pay your taxes, how to employ people, um, you know, how to. Uh, to manage your people and grow your business. And so there's sort of the, the, the journey, the pathway is shown where the opportunities are there. And from that space, um, the pathway is set and they can actually see, wow, my business doesn't have to stay small like this. It can grow to as big as I want it to be because the support is there. And, and that's from the Federation side. Uh, we work very closely to see what's the need okay. on the ground, yeah. Right, back yeah. to the WIN um, convention. That'll be in March. Yes. And, uh, we've set the dates. Yes, uh, Friday 22nd March and Saturday 23rd March. So do you expect uh, an increase in the number of participation? Yes, so we expect 200 delegates to register for, for this convention, yep. And, and uh, they do pay a registration fee? Yes, there is a delegation, delegate uh, fee or registration fee to, to be part of the two-day uh, program. It's an impactful, uh, full, full on, you know, sessions with yes. good topics. So yes, there is a fee to to pay uh, and to participate. Yes, and I'm sure yeah. you already are in the process of looking for speakers, motivational speakers, mm -hmm. to fire up these uh, women in business yes. entrepreneurs. Yes. So how's that going? What has been the response? It's good. We've we've written to a few uh, speakers and and uh, some of them have come back uh, confirming. We're waiting for the rest of them towards the end of this month to to confirm, and uh, then we'll be making announcements on on uh, who all that have confirmed to speak. Now this is the third year for yes. for the convention. Um, what what's the um, what's the growth in terms of the expectation and the the uh, your achievements in in hosting this this convention. Yep. So when we did the first uh, convention in 2022, we had just over 150, and for one day that's a lot. And so we've grown the convention to two days from last year when uh, Win 23. We had it over two days, and we had just over 180 over the two days and so this year we're expecting it to be 200 yeah so we've deliberately kept it in suva because majority of the women and uh, organizations headquartered and based in suva and uh, to attract uh, you know the number of delegates but surely there's been i'm sure there's been some <coughs> requests to have it outside of suva has there been there has been, there has been, yes, but uh, we looked at it again from a, an, an affordability perspective because when you take it out, yes, we do get the attention or captured audience, but then again, affordability with regard to transportation, accommodation costs, you know, that adds to the cost of doing, uh, doing uh, you know, business even. And uh, so we're encouraging all the women out there, you don't have to be just an entrepreneur. You can also be a woman working in the corporate space, in CSO, in NGOs, in the public sector to even be part of this. It's not just for women entrepreneurs. It's for women who aspire to grow and to develop 
you know, consider it an investment rather than an expense in one's own development. Now, how has the convention in the past two years benefited uh, those who have attended? Yeah, I, the, a lot of them have benefited a lot because what we've seen too is a growth in our membership since, uh, you know, since we had the first convention. So we've had a lot more interest in uh, women who are working, women who are close to retirement, who are thinking of starting their business. And so they see WebC as, as beneficial to them because that's where we support one another as women to help each other grow and develop, whether business or whether you're in the corporate space, but just providing that, that you know, comfort that yes. you have that support and we can empower each other. Well, thank you. I'm afraid we have run out of time and that's all we have for today's show. Um, again, to our guests, Mr. Tonawai and Ms. Wong, thank we you. thank you. Thank you. And we hope you look forward to uh, our next episode uh, next week. Goodbye. <laughs>